I'm Deadly, the Deadly Tarantula Girl. Welcome to my Serpentarium. Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Welcome. Tonight, I'm going to be attempting a Carabina Versicolor, previously known as the Avicularia Versicolor. Um, common name, Antilles Pink Toe, Martinique Pink Toe, Pink Toe Tarantula. There are other pink toes though, don't get that confused. This is an animal that I've reproduced quite a lot, but one that I particularly love to reproduce because if you know anything about this species, you know that uh, very quickly, I'd say by like mm, the third, fourth instar, you have beautiful blue babies. And then when they grow up, they're pink, purple, and green and absolutely fuzzy amazing, gorgeous, beautiful, but they are stunning as infants, babies, spiderlings, and I don't know, I would say equally beautiful, but different as adults. So it's just a super fun animal to reproduce and a very fun animal to raise up. This is um, an animal that's not usually an aggressive breeder. They are arboreal. They typically don't mind mating right on camera. Without any further ado, let's do this. Have female, male. First thing I typically do is bring the female out on top of her enclosure. And then I put the lid back on because they tend to kind of go back down in there. That way I can feel confident that I can supervise what's going on for everyone's safety. Then once I have her out and comfortable, obviously you only want to breed hydrated and well-fed animals that have not very recently molted. This is an animal that I'm comfortable handling. I don't necessarily condone handling, but if you want a tarantula with less potent venom and one that is interesting to look at but less aggressive more docile in nature then this is a wonderful species to keep i find them relatively easy even though they are very fast they tend to be slightly skittish Okay, he's already doing the trembling motion with his feet. Kind of checking things out. He definitely noticed her. A lot of times they get in this standstill for quite a while, so you have to be patient. A lot of times we cut that out or fast forward that for you guys because it can get painfully boring. And I tend to talk more quietly, which I try not to do because then you might not be able to hear me, but even the vibration from my breath or voice, so I kind of turn away from them when I'm talking, can disturb them. Okay. He's just, oh, there we go, there we go. So he was just barely kind of doing that trembling vibration movement and she lifted up her skirt. Um, sometimes these arboreal species do get into kind of precarious positions, which I'm sure occurs in the wild, but I've never had one fall, but I always kind of try and, I don't know, watch out for that. Um, so if you don't know what's going on here, she has a slit in her belly abdomen, the front of her body, called the epigastric fold, and that is the slit through which she passes her eggs if she's going to lay an egg sac. So his job is to lay a little web inside of his habitat and then make a deposit onto it. Then he has these little section suction bulb-like devices on his very front legs. They're not actually legs. They look like they have 10 legs, but the very front ones are short. Those are called uh, pedipalps. And 
He um, has bulbs on the front of those pedipalps. They're not a true leg. That appendage is called a pedipalp. They have a pedipalpal bulb on the end of that that kind of works like a suction bulb, kind of like a turkey baster, in which they suction up their deposits and then they put their pedipalps inside of her epigastric fold and uh, they kind of do like a, a little boxing motion over and over and over. I, I know that's not how you box, but I'm saying, I don't know, that's the, that's the movement. And so when you see that going on, and he just puts the very tips of them in. And so what you want to see is you want to see them come kind of face to face. You want to see her rear up. And this is usually after kind of a long, boring dance back and forth of them toe tapping and doing all the stuff. This was a pretty quick courtship. Sometimes when they disengage is when he's more in danger, but it looks like they're wanting to, I don't know, he's a little bit freaked out right now. So I'm gonna protect him. I'm gonna listen to his instinct saying that he may be in danger and I'm gonna protect him from her. So that was definitely a successful copulation. I don't worry about her hurting him, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him away. Oh, did you see him jump? He's ready to go home. And they do move that fast. And when they're teeny little babies, it can be a little bit freaky because they are like, it's like a little, they go like a little race car around their enclosure. But you just have to, I recommend raising them up so you can learn how to predict their behavior. And uh, you have to worry about one getting away, possibly squishing one. Uh, when they're tiny, they really can't penetrate your skin with their fangs. So when they're tiny, you don't ever have to worry about being bitten when they're really, really small. There are crazy things in life that is possible, but I'm telling you a teeny tiny little third, fourth star, instar spiderling, they're harmless. So if you get accustomed to them at that age, you really get to learn their body language and kind of what they need. And then when you grow them up as adults, you're able to really have a good idea of um, when they're comfortable, when they're nervous. And I can usually predict pretty well what they're gonna do. So what I do when I have a successful pairing is I just label on her enclosure the date that she was bred. That way I kind of have a uh, time reference for when to start looking for an egg sac. And then when I find one, I will note that date so I can decide whether or not I wanna pull it and incubate it manually or let her keep it. I don't have a little tape dispenser thingy right now, so. I'm going to put today's date, which it is early December. The spring season is typically when you start getting multiple egg sacs if you have a whole collection of adult breeders. So I'm going to note the date on here. And if I have a male, if I've used a male that doesn't belong to me for whatever reason, I will definitely um, credit the owner of that animal and which male it was because sometimes they send me pairs or multiple males if they don't have the opposing gender to breed or if they're just not comfortable. Some people don't have experience breeding animals. They've just spent their time raising them up. So sometimes people like to send them to me because I don't know, they like for them to be on camera and just, I don't know, kind of since I have experience, I guess. Anyway, both of these animals were mine, so I don't even bother documenting which male it was because I, I kind of know my animals. I don't pair siblings, usually ever. These are two unrelated animals. And hopefully I'll have a Versicolor egg sac soon. Hope you guys liked this one. Let me know if you, what your favorite egg sac video that I've published in the past was 
and what date you think she'll drop a sack. Hope you guys like this one and I'll see you soon. Welcome to my Serpentarium. I hope you enjoyed that little taste. That was about 1% of what I have in my collection. If you would like to see more, make sure to subscribe, click that notification bell, and make sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. See you soon.